Hello everyone, my name is John Sparkman, wedding photographer in Birmingham in the UK and today I want to walk you through how I set up the lighting off camera flash for a first dance. If you've never been to the channel before, hit subscribe because I deal a lot with Fujifilm cameras, uh, the accessories, the flashes, the, the things you can buy for it. I am a wedding photographer, you can see my work at jdsweddings.com and so we're going to go straight into it. I had a GoPro mounted on my shoulder on uh, the straps of the Holdfast Moneymaker dual camera strap I have and I just hit record just when I was setting up the lighting for a first dance. This was at the very end of restrictions of the second lockdown in the UK. Now if you're watching this in a few years time, maybe not 2021, you may have forgotten about the rules and restrictions. As of this wedding, we could fit 30 people in a capacity venue that can hold 350. Yeah, I was actually using two brands of camera flashes. So I'm gonna preamble this because you can see me walking through some of the steps in a second. The reason why is because I'm slowly moving over from Yongnyo, which do these nice cheap manual firing flashes, about 40, 50 pound each, to big chunky Godox flashes. So they're AD200. They have different uh, reasons why you would switch. This is 300 pounds or so. Uh, the reasons why is things like high speed sync, lithium batteries, uh, four, five, six times more power. They are both taking my uh, Magmod system, so I will be attaching a grid onto both of these, and the grid is just there to control the light. Because they don't fire off the same flash, you have two options. You can either use an optical trigger, so you control one flash, and as long as the other flash can see the light being emitted, it will fire its own flash at the same time, or you can stack the triggers for both systems on top of each other, uh, which is what I did. So let's get into it. I'm going to walk you through start to finish of what I did. So in the initial, I am letting everyone, you know, uh, walk around, have fun. You can see that the marquee that we were in has been custom made. It's got a light up dance floor, a light up black roof, which makes it pretty hard to do things like bounce uh, lighting. So I have set up two flashes on each end of the um, dance floor. And I have the, the two flashes about kind of two to three meters high. And what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just trying to get the Yongnyo flash, I'm trying to get the optical sensor that's on the front of it to get triggered by the AD200, which is in the front left. I found out whilst doing this that one would fire or the other one, and so this was in the initial steps of me just trying to set up optical flash triggering. So this is me going back to my camera bag, that's the Roller 70 by Manfrotto, and I'm pulling out, there you go, that's the Yongnyo trigger and I'm fitting that on top of the Godox trigger. So you can see in the bottom right corner there, I've got two triggers stacked. One's controlling the back flash, one's controlling the front flash. In um, the next few months, I'm gonna be selling all the Yongnyo gear and picking up a Godox V860. I'm waiting for the Mark III to come out, which is why I haven't dropped on one yet. Uh, and then they'll all talk to each other using the same uh, trigger. But this is just a little workaround. If you are transitioning between kits, uh, it is possible regardless of uh, you know, kit compatibility. So as standard, kids are going to run around on the stage. That happens all the time. You can use them sometimes to uh, see if the lights are centered and uh, are kind of crossing each other in a natural path. You really want to have the flashes um, on opposite axes from each other. So uh, draw a straight line between the flashes and you stick the model or the, the couples right in the middle. It's gonna give you the best compatibility. It's gonna make sure that uh, all the angles, if you do move around for the uh, first dance, are gonna be well covered. The style of lighting that I was going for is uh, a key at the front. So the key is the main light and it's gonna be broad. So it's gonna cover most of the person at the front. So I positioned it, if I stand just here, it's just off to my side at about the seven to eight o'clock region and the other flashes at the two o'clock or so region. That's gonna provide a hair light. Because they're really far away from each other and they're both gridded, the actual pool of light's quite large. So as long as the couple are dancing in the middle quarter, middle 20% of the room, then they're gonna get illuminated nice and easy. If they go right to the edges, they might miss that flash. Here I'm just making sure that I pick up some reception shots. Uh, I'm using my secondary camera at this point, that is the 35mm Artisan's lens, so it's a manual focus, hence the time it's taking me to record and take photos. And now what I'm doing on the camera is I'm trying to dial in my ambient. I kind of want to kill most of the ambient. You can see on the left that there is um, lots of daylight coming in through that window and we can't really close it because it's a fire escape. 
So I'm trying to kill as much ambient as possible. Uh, now, once I've dialed in my ambient, it's a quite a dark scene. I then fire the flashes and adjust the flashes through the triggers uh, one at a time, focusing on the key light, so the front light first to make sure that's not too powerful or too, too dark. And then I will add the rear light. You can see I'm adjusting on the far right there. I'm adjusting the Godox uh, kind of power. And then I'm going to jump up to the Yongnuo power in a second and adjust the back one just so it offers a little bit of separation. Uh, what you don't want to do is uh, kind of get them lost with those specular highlights in the background and everywhere really. <laughs> you want to make sure that they're uh, nice and separated. Now they're going to start doing their thing. They're nervous. We're all nervous. It's first dance. No one's ever, unless you're professional, <laughs> uh, going to be doing it. You can see we have some uncle or chappy on the side who has taken a strong uh, angle. He's actually standing on my camera gear, uh, but I am going to utilize his position. Don't be afraid to tell someone to move if you need to. Uh, you are the photographer, as I said. At this point, because the flashes are pretty much on three and nine o'clock for the couple, from the angle I'm shooting at, that is split lighting. So you're gonna get lovely side lit, or nothing really from the front. And then you just kind of move around and you find out what works for you the best. Uh, you can see on the camera, on the previews that are popping up, that uh, it's kind of already dialed in the desired effect. Uh, I will be looking initially uh, at the, the shots just to make sure my camera settings haven't been nudged. Uh, if you're looking for technical gear, I am just shooting with the Fujifilm X-T3 with a grip on the bottom so it's easier to flip sideways and the 18-55 to that kit lens which is uh, really good, it's stabilised at 2.8 at the lowest. Uh, one of my favourite kind of shots is to get a crowd inclusive shot. So I've made it so that there's a frame between these um, couples and I can just snap them, snap the actual uh, bride and groom just between these gaps here. Now, because the flash is firing onto the couple and not to the uh, guests, it's gonna have a nice silhouette look, it's gonna be nice and framed. You may see that guests try and get out of your way. Um, it's your call again, it, as if, if you wanna have guests create a foreground element or if you wanna uh, get complete separation, don't be afraid to walk in front of people, they will just move around you. Uh, you know, they're in the best interest, they want you to take a good shot. Uh, sometimes I go high and I try and take shots above the guest just to kind of get this top-down uh, kind of angle but typically I'll shoot it at the height that you would expect guests to be at. Now on this angle on the right hand side I uh, we are now using the rear light as the key and the initial key is now the rear light. Uh, the power balance is a bit different it's actually a bit weaker on the back one so I'd expect slightly darker shots and you can see they've already finished their dance and they are straight off. Um, as it currently stands, guests unfortunately couldn't join in with dancing, so that is it. I look at the dog on the floor, it's, uh, it's a nice breed, it's a black one, and I am pretty much done. So yeah, it applies the same to every kind of event that you're doing. If you're using off-camera flash, first you want to make sure you have wireless triggers. Uh, secondarily, you want to focus on getting your ambient light first, so you dial in all your settings you want for ambient light. Then you introduce your flashes. Uh, if we think back to uh, a great uh, educator online, Pi Dresser, he will always say you compose, you find your ambience, you use your modifiers, and you select your power, the camp framework. Uh, once you kind of get that in your head, it is very easy to make these uh, kind of scenes. Using grids, uh, the further away the lights are, and I mean there's probably five, 10 meters between these two, uh, you can grid them and you can still get a, a generous pool of light. If I wanted a smaller light, I'd use either a snoot or a double grid one of them. Uh, I wouldn't use soft boxes for first dance because soft boxes have to be kind of within arm's reach, within five, six foot, uh, to get their maximum efficiency. Beyond that, they just kind of get a little bit um, weak because of the amount of stuff in between the light and the the subject. So I'd sit with grids or hard light sources. You probably could even do this without grids if you wanted to. It just would be a, a wider pool of light. You might get the background in shots and it starts getting illuminated and you know it might not be a desired look. With a bit of cleaning up in post-production, I removed some of the lights which kind of looked a bit artificial. I wanted to keep nothing but the little twinkly lights that are everywhere. 
uh, some creative cropping, some cloning, and you can really create these little star spangled images here. Make sure that you focus on when they're rotating around, which they nearly always do. You'll always have one person facing away and one towards you. Make sure you get some of the bride and the groom. Make sure it's, uh, you know, you're giving them to both of them. It's going to be quite hard to get them to be kind of facing each other and illuminated right at the same time. Uh, so just keep taking shots. Work on digital, it doesn't cost anything to shoot anymore. And apply this to your own weddings or events. If you like this kind of stuff, stick around and subscribe. I would love to do more behind the scenes wedding footage for you in the future. So if you like that stuff, hit the bell, hit like down below, hit comment as to what you would like. I'll see you in a future video.